Hello everybody and welcome to another video. I'm amazingly anatomical and I'm so excited to make videos on the human body and science in general, all from a high school perspective. Today I'm going to explore the brain and the de defects that can happen when you were born or developing. Let us go into the anatomy of the brain. Wait, wait, wait. What is the brain and why do we need it? The brain is an organ that controls just about everything from your thoughts to your memory, your emotion, your touch, your motor skills, your vision, your breathing, your temperature, your hunger, and every process that regulates your body. The brain is kind of like the control center for your body that regulates what every other organ should do. The brain and spinal cord that extends from it make up the central nervous system, aka the CNS. The brain has three main parts the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The largest part, the cerebrum, contains a right and left hemisphere. The cerebrum initiates and coordinates movement and regulates temperature. Certain areas of the cerebrum allow speech, judgment, thinking and reasoning, problem solving, emotions, and learning. The cerebellum is located underneath the cerebrum. Its function is mainly to coordinate muscle movements and maintain posture and imbalance. The final part, the brainstem, acts as a connector for the cerebrum and cerebellum to the spinal cord. It helps perform many automatic functions such as breathing, regulating heart rate and body temperature, digestion, sleep cycles, sneezing, vomiting, coughing, and swallowing. The CNS can be characterized into two distinct regions, white and gray matter. White matter is made up of myelinated axons, and gray matter is made up of neuronal cell bodies, dendrites, and unmyelinated nerve fibers. Myelin plays the role of an insulator, which is why nerve signals are transmitted at a greater speed through white matter. The brain has a very unique shape, and one feature is very apparent through this, the cerebral cortex and its stereotype pattern of gyri and sulci. Gyri are folds and convolutions, and sulci are fissures and depressions. The human brain is large and wrinkled due to an increase in surface area for neurons. Additionally, the outer part of the brain is rapidly growing. If you ever get to touch the human brain, you will know that it is extremely fragile. It has a consistency of jello, soft and squishy. In fact, it's so jelly-like that you can't actually pick up a brain without it oozing out all over the place. It must be preserved with chemical hardening to hold it in your hand. On a quick side note, of course, it is vital to understand and know about the skull when learning about the brain. The skull is the bony structure that forms the head in the human skeleton. It supports the structure of the head and forms the cavity for the brain. The skull protects the brain from injury. The skull consists of the bones of your face and the bones of your cranium, which make up your forehead and the back of your head. The skull is part of the skeletal system, which is made up of your bones, joints, cartilage, and connective tissues, but that's for another video. Going back to the brain, the central nervous system is made up of two types of cells, neurons and glial cells. Neurons are electrically excitable cells that communicate with other cells through synapses, aka specialized connections. Glial cells are needed for brain metabolism and are very active in regulating the physiological function and plasticity of brain circuits. They also are the online control of behavior in invertebrate and vertebrate model systems. Neurons vary in two things, size and shape. Certain classifications of neurons are star-shaped, fusiform, conical, pyramidal, polyhedral, and spherical. The different types of glial cells in the cell central nervous system are osteocytes, ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes, and microglial cells. In terms of behavior, neurons behave similar to any other cell in our body. Like other cells, they are surrounded by a cell membrane, contain cytoplasm, mitochondria, and other organelles. However, neurons have specialized parts called dendrites and axons. They also communicate with each other through an electrochemical process. Glial cells also have a nucleus and at least one nucleolus and contain many of the typical organelles other cells do. Unlike neurons, glial cells are capable of mitosis and do not conduct nerve impulses. Now I'm going over more specific regions of the brain and their primary functions. The four lobes that the brain contains are the frontal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, and the temporal lobe. 
The frontal lobe, which is located directly behind the forehead, controls movement, problem solving, concentrating, thinking, behavior, personality, and mood. The parietal lobe, which is located behind the frontal lobe, controls sensations, language perception, body awareness, and attention. The temporal lobe, located behind the ears, controls hearing, language, and memory. The occipital lobe, located in the very back of the brain, controls vision and perception. The thalamus is a small structure located right above the brainstem and is responsible for relaying sensory information from the sense organs. The hypothalamus is a small and essential part of the brain, located precisely below the thalamus. It is responsible for transmitting motor information for movement and coordination. Broca's area is a specific region in the frontal lobe that is responsible for speech control. Wernicke's area is another specific region in the posterior superior temporal lobe that connects to Broca's area via neural pathway. It helps with language comprehension. Brain issues. Let's start with hypoxia, which is low oxygen levels in your blood. The brain is very dependent on oxygen. Some brain cells actually end up dying within five minutes after their oxygen supply disappears. A lack of oxygen to your brain can cause brain hypoxia, which can cause severe brain damage or even death. When insufficient amounts of oxygen reach the brain, the most common side effects are headaches and a shortness of breath. Brain hypoxia can also lead to a change in your skin color, anywhere from blue to a cherry red, confusion, cough, fast or slow heart rates, rapid breathing, and sweating. Let's move on to strokes. The reason strokes are so deadly is due to blood. Brain cells always need a constant supply of blood so they can give them oxygen and nutrients. If the blood supply is cut off by a clot, brain cells start to die in that area. The blood in a stroke is toxic to the brain cells it touches. Some, sim some symptoms of a stroke are affected language, moods, vision disruption, and movement disruption. When there is an insufficient amount of blood or oxygen for too long, death is often inevitable. Another serious brain condition that can happen is an aneurysm. An aneurysm is a bulge or ballooning in a blood vessel in the brain. If it leaks or ruptures, it can cause bleeding into the brain, known as a hemorrhagic stroke. Usually, this happens in the area between the brain and the thin tissues that cover the brain. Even though most of them don't rupture, they create health problems and cause symptoms. Most aneurysms can be detected during tests for other conditions. If an aneurysm is identified, treatments can help prevent a rupture in the future. When adult brain cells get injured, they go back to an embryonic state. In this state, the cells can regrow new connections that, under the right conditions, can help to restore lost functions. The process of creating new cells is called neurogenesis. Rapid recovery occurs during the first three to four months during a stroke. It can continue into the first to second year as well. There are things that can happen on any well-formed brain, but sometimes brain development can be altered at birth. Early in fetal development, a flat strip of tissue along the back of the fetus rolls up to form a tube. So, some birth defects of the central nervous system are called neural tube defects. These include conditions like spina bifida, anencephaly, and encephalocele. They're present at birth and are due to a problem with the development of the brain and or the spinal cord in the developing baby. Brain defects in babies can also occur due to inherited genetic defects, spontaneous mutations within the genes of the embryo, or effects on the embryo due to the mother's infection, trauma, or drug use. And that wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Please make sure to check out my previous video and stay tuned for more videos to come. Bye!